Beckwith. Here. Colwell. Absent. Deal. Absent. Farcapisi. Absent. Cotzinis. Here. Nimi. Here. Sheldon. Here. We have a quorum. Here. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Warren Newport Public Library District provides the community with access to information, kindles the imagination of children and adults, and supports lifelong learning. Just a brief reminder, down this hallway to the left is the bidding area, and we have the washrooms and the exit area. If there's, um, if there's an emergency and a paramedics are called, please leave space so they can operate. Thank you. That's cool. Okay, do we need a motion to go out of order? Uh, yes, you yeah. do. Okay, would anyone like to I make thought one? we were going to do the consent agenda. That's well, not right. We, but it's but that's oh, okay. well, that's once we're done with that. Well, uh, I move that we bypass item five oh, and move on to item I'm, six. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right, ready for the consent agenda number six. Do I have a motion for that? I move we approve the consent agenda items A through E. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You want to vote? Aye. Did you oh. say? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Sorry, I'm going to turn that off. Okay. Apologize. Motion carries. All right. Um, let's see. My report, President's report, is on page 17. Any questions? Anybody have any other things to report, please? I do, actually. Good. Uh, there were a couple fascinating programs earlier this month that uh, my son attended. I went with him for one of them. And I actually was quite impressed to see us working together with the high school for a, uh, a program run by their robotics team mm -hmm. that uh, exposed cool. middle school and uh, tween kids to the basics of working with those tools using the, the Lego Mindstorm system. And I'd very much like to see uh, programs like that continue. And I can tell you that uh, I have a report from my son that he really enjoyed the Sharks program as well this past weekend. Oh, great. Excellent. Anybody else? Nancy? Nothing? Okay. Uh, let's see. Correspondence. There's a memo from Roger I'm starting on page 19. You want to say anything about that? This just has to. This just circles back to um, that new act that uh, George brought to our attention. I think a couple of months ago, the mm -hmm. Local Government Travel Expense Control Act. Um, so this memo just outlines his recommendations, and he gave us the samples of the um, the ordinance for resolution to adopt, and, and we'll do that before the end of the fiscal or be, be, before the end of the calendar year. So. I don't think there's more that I can add other than the memo. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking. So do we want to put it on the calendar or? Yeah, I think we've already, it? Joe, we've, done we've, done we've already talked about, we've already had the future agenda correct. Yeah, I think I have it down for next month. I was going to say, I thought it was supposed to be on November's committee. November of the committee whole. of the whole, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for committee of the whole or for the well, for, well, it's going to end up needing both. We're going to need to craft the policy in addition to the ordinance. That's not what the memo said, I didn't think. Well, we've got well we have to fill out the financial part. That's right. And we need a policy to support that also. So we have the ordinance, and the ordinance covers authorizing us to create the policy effectively. But we still need the policy to have it mm -hmm. properly bureaucratized. And I'm thinking we have a policy that addresses that somewhat. I mean, we'll have to tweak it, but don't we already have a policy that... Either that or we tweak mean, a policy we already yeah, have, okay. so it's a question. I think it can go in something we already have. Maybe bylaws. Maybe what? Maybe bylaws. Mm -hmm. I sure know we, there... I'm not sure if we want that in bylaws. 
that's the only place I can think of where there's travel is addressed at the moment. But I'll, I'll look into it. My first reaction is I would rather have a an expense reimbursement unit policy yeah, I, separate I think that makes from the, the bylaws. Because that's something we may need to tweak more frequently than the rest of the bylaws. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the impression that he said we had to have a separate policy. I don't think you do to comply with the law. Um, right. But I think we would to comply with our own ordinance if we created it. Otherwise, we have no mechanism to keep track of what that ordinance well, says. But well, yeah, we, it, we do. Yeah, the well, ordinance has the attachment. Yeah, the ordinance has an attachment. That's how I understood it. Yeah, so the, the sample he sent, I think it's actually, there are samples in here. You, you pass the ordinance and then it, it, it indicates, like, you know, refers to reimbursement request form exhibit B. My concern is having it just in an exhibit to an ordinance makes it difficult to find if you look at our website. It's true. Well, that's a point. All right, well, I'll put it on Committee of the Whole, too, and then we can have yes. this sure. discussion more fully yeah. at Committee of the Whole. How about that? And I, I'm sorry, I don't think that this thing, that I don't think that this should have an attachment. You know, that belongs with the, the, the policy. Big, yeah, I think we can arrange it so that <laughs> the ordinance refers to our policy as opposed to an internal attachment. Yeah, that's okay. I have a question. What's reasonable? That's the question, and that's what we need to come up with. Okay. Do we need the word reasonable in there? We do, <laughs> but we need to also put numbers in. Yeah, because you're reasonable and my reasonable, maybe. Well, it would be what the board considers Library reasonable, well, that, reasonable I mean, as a group. No, no, I mean, I do mean that, but I think we're saying the same thing, but yeah. different ways. We, we need to have numbers. Yes. We what also need to have something? reasonable expenditures for anything outside what's covered by the numbers. Yeah, because I got the impression uh, that if you need a, a ride somewhere, you go out to this cab and find out what he's charging, and then go to this cab and no. find out. All cabs you are know. supposed to be charging the same thing within any given city. I don't take them, so. But um, it's a question of whether you take cabs or Uber or Lyft or take your pick. Rent a car. Rent yeah. a car. These are more complex questions than what we probably get into, but I think the, the question of a reasonable transportation cost varies from place to place. It's not something we'll be able to put in directly because we don't control taxi costs or limo costs within any given re or any given location. Okay. And, and also, Bob, part of the law is that if, if a person traveling finds it necessary to go over, then the board has to take a public yeah, vote right. and approve it. So right. there's a mechanism for acknowledging that in everyone approving it. Okay. Uh, and I had one other thing I wanted to ask, too. Uh, in here, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, flying, you got to fly coach. Yes, Okay. typically. Bottom of the barrel flight. Well, you Depends don't have to fly coach. Is. All that we can reimburse is coach, Correct. unless you can you justify. You can upgrade your cost yourself. Or right. Yeah. Right, um, but I think because uh, because I I've, I've stayed at motels for different companies, okay, and this was supposed to be uh, a nice backwoods hotel, and I woke up one night, little black things running all over the inside of the covers. Uh, uh, we're not having you stay in that hotel. No, no, they did. Uh, <laughs> what I can tell you is we'll probably craft this around what most corporate policies are, and that essentially involves staying in a not bottom of the barrel hotel. You'd be staying in a, a typical business type hotel. I don't think we. Yeah, I don't think we need you know the, the suite at the Hyatt. But I don't what, think what we, we would do is we'll we'll do a little bit of research into common hotel costs. For example, in Springfield, which is where an area where we might go, right. or Chicago. I don't think we would reimburse for any stays in Chicago. 
unless the board feels otherwise. Typically, you don't within 50 miles, but um, I'll leave that up to the board just to decide. to be devil's advocate, we did one time, since I've been on the board that I can recall, we paid for a trustee who was going to the tr Illinois Trustee Forum who had driving issues. I could, can't remember why, but the person got had board approval to go the night before and be there first thing in the morning for the program. And I believe it was a medication issue at that okay. time. Okay, sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> But, but once again, we don't have to cover <laughs> every to be eventuality okay. because okay. <laughs> we do have a, an option or a mechanism to override that through a, a public mm -hmm. vote. Okay. So these are more guidelines than they are firm rules. Now the question is simply, if we violate them, we have to state in a public forum why we're doing so. Works for me. Okay. Let's put it on committee to whole and then have the rest of the discussion there, okay? For November. Uh, November? For November? Yes, for November. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, public comment. Anybody have public comment? Okay, reports of committees. Page 33, Comments or questions? Talk about your okay, executive great. director's report. See the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Pardon? Exactly. So we moved on to executive director's report. Yeah, reports. no one had any questions okay, on committee great. reports. Um, as I mentioned in the memo, we, we did add the statistics for electronic resources. So if we had a chance to look at that, and I'd love to hear if your feedback on if you think this is, this is what you were asking for or not. So specifically, if you go to page 41 in the packet, um, there used to be a category called other, and it turns out that other was just video players and e-readers. Video players are these little devices right now that reside in youth services where um, they're just like standalone devices that families can check out and they show uh, like different children's shows, that type of thing. And then e-readers are the, the, uh, the nooks that we circulate. And then you can see specifically what e-books we circulate, how many downloadable audiobooks, the audiobooks, um, E-video, E-music, and so on. What's defined as a kit, out of curiosity? The kits are... Um, I, I believe the kits are the, like, different, um, like, there's a... a the, the group of materials on a given subject. So let's say I want to check out a, a kid on trucks. My kid's into trucks. It's, I, I believe that's what it is. Sometimes in my library kits were like a book and then a, some kind of recording of that book. That was a kit. Oh, okay. So they could listen while they read with I it. Was I don't know say, if that's what that. they were. Yeah. At one point it was I don't an know audio cassette exists. and yeah. the book. Yeah. You know. It's possible. Let me let me find out. Okay. I'm just fifteen hundred audio books on Hoopla and my Media Mall in one month sounds like a lot to me. Yeah. It's, I was thinking look, the opposite. You you would have thought they would have used it more than that. Yes. What which did you think was a lot, Nancy? I'm sorry. The e audio books, the fifteen hundred. Yeah. That just. I don't know. Apparently, uh, I'm obviously more impressed than George. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what had happened? I remember the the, the, the yeah. I mean, that's the that's kind of been the trend since we've had you know my medium all over time. The the uh, the downloadable audiobooks have caught up with the electronic books. So that's not yeah. It's pretty much in line. Well, I <clears throat> thank you and whoever else worked on this for doing that. I think it kind of brings us up to where we should be electronically with statistics. Yeah, I know uh, Noreen and Amy Meyer for the tech services worked hard on this and a lot of other people as well. So yeah, they did a great job and got, they turned this around really fast because they, they 
they just quickly got this done. Because it was a lot of effort to go back and look at that data and pull it all. So. Um, another thing I want to mention that's not in the report, um, and I, I mentioned this to Joe, and she thought it would be good to bring it up at the meeting. Um, the Vernon area uh, library trustees, they are trying to organize a retreat that's going to focus on advocacy, not the kind they do with elected officials, but more of the kind of effectively engaging the community on behalf of the library. And they'd like to try to arrange a retreat with other trustees. So if that's something that we might be interested in doing, um, I'd love to get your feedback. Um, the director of Vernon Area, City First, thinks that they that Rails might have some money, continuing education money for trustees that they could, you know, we, if we went in, we could use for a retreat like this. But I wanted to see if there was any interest in us collaborating with them on that, this oh, topic. Good idea. If it doesn't I'd cost us anything, it sounds yeah. great to me. Yeah. I'm assuming it would be on a Saturday or an evening too, if it's I for trustees, so. right? Yeah. And they're doing the legwork. I believe so. so. Yeah, I'll see Cindy at ILA this week, so okay. I can talk to her. But so there is an at least an initial so, interest. So show of hands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. I have a question, Ryan, just so it doesn't get lost on the banking issues. How are we going to? Keep that on the. It's on the agenda for, for the November Committee of the Whole, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're we're, we're aware of it. And we are we're working on it. You get any answer back from her? I I I don't think yeah, I yeah. have. What do you bet she forgot it was Monday instead of Tuesday? Um. It's not like her not to come. I mean, not to have any explanation. Well, let's do a couple more things and then we'll just proceed. I'm sorry. Don't keep going. All right. That's Thank fine. you. Okay. So, are any other questions or comments on the on Ryan's report? Okay. Uh, a quick question. I should know. How much does my media mall cost us? Oh, that's, a good, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know yes, I know. Mind. I could have walked that one. <laughs> I might refer to Mr. Waterberg is in the audience. Do you know if it's up your head? Any idea? Yeah, I'll, I'll find out and I'll send it out. Anything else? Okay. So, old business. So, um, Sue and I came up with a timeline after Committee of the Whole, and um, I think I already gave you one, but take yes. another one if you yes, have um, So, I, I had hoped to send out the surveys <coughs> today, but George has been swamped, so we're going to have to adapt the dates a little bit. Um, but I, I want to allow, excuse me? Do we want one for? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. For his Monday? Yeah. Um, I want to allow everybody a week to fill it out. I think that's plenty of time. And um, so as soon as George is uh, crawls out from under his workload, then I'll, I'll send out a revised uh, uh, timeline. But I still, I don't want to really do I hope not to change anything uh, with regard to the two executive sessions. I want to make sure we leave those the same and finish by the end of the year. So I think we've got a lot, of, you know, enough latitude in there that we'll be able to do that. Um, anything else on this? That I just wanted to pass this out and let everybody know what the status was. Okay. Um, reading history is yours. So, uh, continuing the conversation with Committee of the Whole, um, I was tasked with getting some information, and, and Amy, since this uh, memo came out, has confirmed with Innovative that the answers I provided are correct in the, in the cover memo. We cannot restrict this feature to those over 18. I mean, it's, if it's on, anyone can opt in, um, which is unfortunate, but it just we don't have the capability to do it. Um, and the, the good news is that you have to track, you have to opt in for Sierra to track it. So it's not like it automatically starts tracking behind the scenes everyone's uh, reading history. 
And then finally, there doesn't seem to appear to be a limit uh, on the number of items the system can store. And Roger, if you didn't see his reply, he said, quote, I do not have any concerns about the opt-in service under the terms, limitations you described. I'm not aware of any issues which have arisen. Naturally, we should remain vigilant in assuring the service protects confidentiality of patrons. End quote. So. I got a question. When we opt into that, is do the, do the kids know that the parents are doing it? I don't follow you, Bob. I'm sorry. It doesn't, it they wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah. The account is the account. Whether you are owning the account yourself or if you have a, a child that you're managing the account for. There's okay, no way there's to a tell. child involved, does the child know you're doing it? Not necessarily. Okay. Is, are they going to know it's being done? Uh -huh. that could I, guess, I, I guess not. I mean, I guess if I have... Up to the parent. If, if I, the kid didn't do yeah. the opting in himself, he doesn't realize it was done. Sure. So I yes. guess, yeah, I guess theoretically when, you know, my son Kyle's old enough to have a library card, and if I opted him in for this service, yeah, he wouldn't necessarily know I was doing it, right? If I was oh, no, it. my my thinking is, if if the child knows, that could change the characteristics of his uh, reading material, as it were. Perhaps. Okay, which gives us a false true for our stats. If he doesn't know, then he doesn't change. Does that make sense? Sure. I, th I think something I want to make clear, though, Bob, I'm, I'm glad you brought up this point, is that the, the statistics, the system is keeping statistics not based on the characteristics of an item, regardless of someone, if someone's opted into reading history or not. So, for example, if a child checks out, um, um, you know, 10 readers, the, the system, you know, selects that category and knows that those types of books have gone out whether someone's opted in or not. So we, that doesn't change. So right now we keep statistics based on the items. So we know how many times a given item has been checked out, how it's being circulated. Right. But we don't keep track of who it's being circulated to. And that is what this changes. This would allow us to track on a user-by-user -user basis what a user is checking out with well, their permission. Well, that's not how but I not, but we're, we're, not, track we're not tracking it. It will be tracked for they the will patron. be tracked. It'll well, be in our database. <laughs> sure, but, but we wouldn't have access yeah, to that. Yeah, staff won't, don't have access to that uh, the data. Yeah. So the meaning if, I mean, <laughs> maybe if someone is, uh, was IT savvy, they could figure it out, I guess, George. But, <laughs> sure. but, but, but for someone as a circulation clerk, um, a patron comes in, yeah, I, I have the reading history enabled. Can you tell me if I've read this uh, Lee Child book in the past and the staff couldn't look into their account and tell them? So, I, I guess where I'm coming from is if uh, a teenager is coming in and strictly looking at books on weapons, okay, uh, if he knows he's, that mom and dad can see this, he could all of a sudden switch over to, I don't know, Roman history, okay? Uh, I, I it just, it, I don't know, well, some, to me it sounds a little quirky, but, uh, you know, the parents want to know what he's doing. Uh, I, for what it's worth, Bob, I believe that right now, if uh, George came in and asked, what has my daughter been checking out, we will tell him. Okay. More so, accurately, he would tell me what she has out right now. Oh, okay. She, yeah, you, we can't tell what she has been checking out. Exactly. Yeah. That's the what difference. <laughs> so the, the difference is you can tell me right now, functionally, what items are out so I can tell if something's overdue. Right. But that doesn't tell me what the reading history of a given person is unless I'm somehow keeping track of it myself somewhere. Yeah. Unless the you're coming in. The reason why the patron it. requested this is because he or she wants to be able to look back and say, gee, have I read that book? I can't remember. And by, by knowing that you checked it out, you would say, oh yeah, I have read it. I'm not going to check it out again and make that mistake. I'll choose something new. So if, if my son meets up in high school with Johnny No Good, and now all of a sudden things start changing in his attitude, his, his reading, uh, that, that's where I'm looking at it from. Well. Okay. And my concern is exactly the opposite of that. I want 
students, children, teenagers to be free to look into whatever it is they want to view without worrying about their parents looking over their shoulders. And I don't think the intent is a parental issue. I, I mean, it's it could, not the no, but the fact that you can't preclude yeah. a person who's old, younger right. than 18 from doing it opens the possibility that a, yes. a parent could do it in, without their child knowing and for that purpose of monitoring. And I'll, I'll pull out the paranoia card as well, because anything that we keep records-wise is subject to review by higher authorities as well, Roger even Roll. without judicial overview, which I was never comfortable with in the first place. But if we don't keep those records, there's nothing to be reviewed. Well, I, I, I guess if you don't drive drunk, you never have to worry about getting ticketed for it, do you? My concern <laughs> isn't people <laughs> driving drunk. My concern is people Done. interested Done. in reading about how to distill alcohol but never actually doing so. Because it's a fascinating topic. Yeah, it is. So are weapons. They are. They're gorgeous yeah. topics. And there is a beauty to those devices and their history. Yeah. Not everyone who researches them is doing so for malicious purposes. And it's too easy takes to misconstrue more. those actions. Okay, so, so how important do we yeah. think this issue is to our patrons? It comes up a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it comes up on a regular basis. It seems on patron comments, and people mention it anecdotally to staff all the time. Yeah. It's been and in I, the suggestions I, And I know a lot, a, lot, a lot of libraries have it across the country, including in the area, and by all accounts, the patrons love it. So. So from a customer service point of view, I mean, it's, it, it's clear the answer is we should do it. I know, though, it's not that easy because as um, we've brought up here tonight, there are other considerations. I realize that. If one wishes to be, what, paranoid about things, Thank you. my guess is that uh, Sue knows enough about Brian that she could sign Brian up for this without his knowing it. Yeah. Well, and I'm always the glass half full and thinking I wouldn't even think of I wouldn't think of spying on my children or my husband or my neighbor or whatever. I mean, it, it, I think we're digging too deep. It's a possibility, but I don't think that's the purpose of the people that are asking for it. Could it happen? Sure it can happen for me to sign up as and get into my child's account, but I don't think. My concern is the whole nature of privacy in our society. And um, yes, I'm getting a little bit on a high horse, but the whole nature of privacy is being undermined. Mm -hmm. And it's being undermined by services that provide convenience. And because they're so convenient, people opt into them, people use them. And they forget that these records exist. They forget that this trail of breadcrumbs is following them through life. The more of yourself you allow to be recorded, analyzed, stored, I think the less of yourself is private and the less of yourself you have to yourself. And I see that as something that in our society is lacking. Okay. Most I say, of what I, I buy, too, but no. I'm wondering if it's our call to make for the people who seem to really want it. This is a core value of librarianship, and I and this really, I I really have a hard time with this. I, are you? Do you have a hard time with it? I, I it's hard to think of going against what you're saying. I understand what you're saying totally. But the fact is, people do ask for it a lot, and I and I want to be responsive to the community too. I'm I'm really torn. Let me ask this: Does anyone want to make this motion that's in here? I will be happy to. Um, well, what? I don't. What? Uh, were you trying to move Do you on? Want, no, I want to ask if you want to make a motion on oh. this. It's a possible action. As Sure. I move that uh, the Warren Newport Public Library make arrangements so that they can 
very soon start offering a reading history to patrons who want it. George, hey, Mariano's knows almost everything I buy from them. Excuse me, I'm <laughs> just one second. Did you second? Mm -hmm. Bob seconded. All right, I'll let everybody else make one more comment, then we're going to vote. Have, who has a comment? Please. I just want to add, too, that I have mixed feelings about this as well. I think you remember the first, like, for the committee, the whole cover memo I sent out. Um, but, but I see this also as an opportunity for us to educate the public on the importance of privacy. Uh, that's one of the things I kind of like about the market, thinking about it, that because people don't think about it now as is, right? So at least with this service, when we, if, if the board approved it, if, if we rolled it out, we could educate our patrons on, oh, listen, th here's why you might not want to do this. So We did talk about this at Committee of the Whole, too. The, the, this idea. Yeah, and I just wanted to yeah. remind no, I know. the board that no, that's, that's a good you know, kind of my intent. I had forgotten about that. Um, but I understand it's, a, it's a definitely a tough tough vote to make. It's Anybody else? So when if we vote to do this, how do you envision rolling it out? How do you, to educate the public? or Probably would be a good word of mouth marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so we would, you know, do the, get everyone on board what the message would be and, um, you know, put it out there that you can opt in to to get your reading history. And I assume you can opt out as easy as you opt in. Right. You you can opt at any time. Your history is deleted. So if, if one, let's say one opted in and they they had this enabled for a year, then they opted out. Well, if they were to opt in the next day, it's gone. Mm, their history's okay. gone. So okay. it's... Okay. Okay. I understand the... Um, keeping things private but I'm afraid I'm coming down the side of if somebody doesn't want it private it's not up to us to try to force that on them yeah. as long as we're if they know I'm assuming, once they opt in it's not their privacy yeah that there is, is yeah. the possibility yeah. that you know, somebody could hack in the government could yeah ask for it yeah you know, who knows um, uh, I'm assuming that we, this would be signed up for online yeah you, that's how you do it you go okay you so you can have a big disclaimer uh, on that that somebody has to check yes I understand that you know yeah, I'm Somebody not, I, else might be able to get to this sure I, and I'm not just to be clear I'm not sure how um, open the system is just putting in a customized message when you when you opt in. I don't know the I don't have the answer to that. So just so just to put it out there. But I mean, certainly when we advertise, we will have disclaimers saying, "Hey, wait a second. You know, this is here's why. You know, here's the importance of keeping your information private. And do a little PSA." And it's my last comment on this: you can't what? educate people about privacy. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> you will not get that point I respect point you for that, too. Right, I think Bob wanted to make one last comment, too, and then we're going to vote. No? No. no. All right, let's have a roll call. Aye. Sheldon. Aye. Nimi. Aye. Colwell. Absent. Cozzini. Nay. Farcapisi. Absent. Beckwith. Nay. <laughs> I know. I'll speak for time. Okay. Yes, it did. Okay. Ice right, let's just go ahead. Don't you think this is, I don't, I have not heard from Andrea. I've texted a few times. I think we should just press on. I'm happy to do that. All right. Um, so, can I just move my chair over here a little Please bit? Please do. What else? Do you um, need anything else? Uh, you, no. Uh, hopefully Excuse you me. have these. Uh, Before you start, please, yes, sir, I move that we now uh, p deal with item five on the agenda. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. So I'm Chris McClure, the auditing firm of McClure and Sarah. We've been auditing one new port, I think, is this our seventh year or sixth year? Seventh year? And um, so hopefully you all, well, in front of you, you have this letter, you have this blue report. Hopefully you've all received draft copies of these. Um, first, I'd like to spend 30 seconds on the letter. 
The letter is required communications to the board. It's basically designed to um, highlight any problems that we've encountered. Um, and we really didn't encounter any problems. So it's worth reading for you guys to, you know, on your own to spend a minute reading it. But uh, I don't know if we need to take time to go over it now. Any questions on the letter? Okay, then I thought I'd page through the blue report again, understanding everybody's time is valuable. And uh, let's see what we can do here. So we'll walk through the audit report page by page, going very fast on some and slow on others. Page through. Table of contents, so you come to the about third page down with our letterhead. That page and the next page are our opinions. It's a clean opinion. It's what you want. It's, you know, it says a lot of things, but basically the financial statements that you prepare and that are as presented here are materially correct. So moving on from there to page three, it's a one page kind of highlights, kind of like they do in um, stockholders' annual reports. Page three. Page four and page five are what's called a management discussion and analysis. If you look on page four, that's the only place you'll find comparative information in the report. This, however, is done on the government-wide basis. You are usually spending, I think, most of your time in the funds, although I think uh, Lauterbach and Amon, well, they don't really show government-wide, do they? They're all funds, I think. So this is a little bit different. And you'll see where these numbers come from in a minute. Um, I don't really have anything to highlight here. Um, government, the idea behind government-wide is it puts government financial statements more under the accounting principles of for-profit industries. And we'll see more of that in, um, in the couple pages that I'm really going to spend some time on. So if there are no questions, I'll keep moving on. Top of page five is kind of a nice quick little summary on like what happened to each fund this year. So, you know, the pluses and minuses overall. So overall, the funds gained 199,000, um, 464. So there was an increase overall. If you see the different pluses and minuses by fund. Below are the capital assets. And it talks a little bit about debt, but the breakdown of capital assets, there's a schedule that's more detailed than that. Excuse me if I'm garbling a little bit here. I'm uh, actually on the lat had shingles for like three weeks, and so um, oh. it's uh, something you never want to have. You're the one in three. Yeah. Yeah, well, they said, you know, get a uh, shingle shot when you turn 60. I didn't know it was supposed to be the day you turned 60. <laughs> <laughs> Turned 60 like three months ago. Um, so let's open to page six. We'll spend a few minutes here. And um, page six and seven are wonderful uh, sheets of paper. They really have your financial position and the results of last year in two pages. So I want to make basically two comments about the balance sheet on page six. Well, first of all, I guess I'll an additional comment. I'll explain what I was talking about. So the first four columns are the funds. That's what you see every month in your report. The last two columns are when we adjust that to be more like a for-profit entity. So basically, it's just a few things. So when you buy a capital asset, it could be a building or a book or a photocopier, in government funds, you just expense that. You put it in the budget, you expense it. Of course, we know in for-profit businesses, you capitalize that and depreciate it. So that's why, you know, on the government funds, <coughs> under capital assets, you see nothing. But when you go over to the government-wide statements, you see 12 million, almost 13 million of capital assets. Those are things that are capitalized and depreciated. That's net of depreciation. And then the other thing, the other basic, the most um, material thing is in the liability section, when you pay a debt on the governmental, on the funds to the left, 
those are, it's an expense. You, you're, you pay a bond, it's an expense. It's a budgeted expense. But again, in for-profit, you have debt. You know, the only thing you expense is the interest, and you reduce the debt on the balance sheet. So that's your accounting lesson for tonight. That's it. You're done. <laughs> so the two comments I want to make is cash is basically, I'm primarily concentrated on the general fund. I think that's really where all the action is, or the most important. So if you look at cash and investments of 5.9 million, that's about 150,000 more than cash and investments in the general fund last year. So, I don't know, uh, maybe a 2% increase. I'm not sure that's right. Uh, anyway, $150,000 increase. Um, and then, so I'd say kind of steady as she goes. And then down at the bottom, under fund balances, you see 3.2 million. And that first column, 3,250,123. So one way to think about that fund balance, like, well, is that high, is that low, is that good, is that bad? I like to compare it to a number on the next page. On page seven, um, you see total expenditures under the general fund of 4,889,000. So I think a way to think of fund balance is, how does that compare to our annual expenditures? So basically, in fund balance, or you could call that almost like your reserves, you have about two-thirds of your annual expenditures. So I would say that you have a cushion, but you're not, you know, overflowing. I, I think for tax protesters, if that fund balance is twice what you spend every year, you're dead. You're going to be giving them money back. And so... I don't know, people have different comfort levels. I like to see at least a half of a year there. Probably once you start approaching a full year's expenditures, you gotta be thinking that maybe that's a little too much because people are saying, well, why are you loving me this year? You got a whole, you know, you got a year's worth of expenditures right there. So that's just one way to think about it. So I don't have any other comments on the balance sheet. I move on to uh, page seven that like more or less the income statement, revenues and expenditures. It's interesting about the revenues, and again, I've compared this against last year's. The numbers aren't here. I mean, last year's numbers aren't here, but comparing the total revenues to last year, um, you're down like $10,000 in revenue. You're, you, taxes are virtually the same, but then all those other numbers, you know, gone up and down. Uh, I mean. Uh, per capita grant was 32,000 less than last year, but some of the other numbers made it up. So your overall revenues are $10,000 less in the general fund. Um, but if you drop down to excess deficiency of revenues over under expenditures of 42,000 this year, last year was 366,000. This year, you gave away about 51000 to the Special Reserve Fund for capital projects. Last year, you gave away 250000 So where's the difference? The difference is primarily in expenditures. Your expenditure is about $314,000 more than last year. And personnel is about $32,000 more, about, you know, 1%. Operating expenses are about $52,000 more. Library materials are $145,000 more. So to me, that's almost a good thing. I mean, that's your mission, right? To provide library materials, but of course it's, it's, a, it's a decision. And then last year, you didn't have to pay anything in capital outlay out of the general fund, but this year you did. And that's really that biblioteca thing that you're paying over five years. We had to capitalize part of that, the equipment part of it, because the rest of it is like supplies and service and things like that. Actually, your debt, principal and interest, they're about the same as last year. You, you know, you're paying less interest, more principal. So I think whoever figured that out did that right. So, so again, um, you're not making the money you did the year before, you know. Um, Again, you had 366000 down there before, but you know, part of it obviously was a management decision to spend more money on materials, since I would say that's probably discretionary. 
So again, those are my main comments. <clears throat> Any questions on these two pieces of paper that I think bonding companies love these things because in two pieces of papers they get they get it all. And we're gonna go through the notes and get into some detail on some other things, but not a lot. Okay, if you don't have any questions, we'll move on. We'll, now we'll pick up speed mostly. Page 8, pretty much boilerplate, the same as last year. 9, pretty similar, not interesting. 10, not interesting. 11, not really much to talk about. Page 12, I want to make one comment. And just, this is just a reminder, and I'm sorry, I hope not insulting your intelligence, but... Always to remember that these financial statements show the 2014 levy. So that would be the levy you pass like in the fall or winter of 2014 and then it was collected in 2015 um, and then uh, so the 2015 levy that you passed last year that's really all been deferred. That's not your revenue. If you will look back on the balance sheet, you'll show that entire levy is deferred revenue, and part of it is still uncollected. You still had collected about half of it prior to year end. But just trying to, as a reminder, like just because the way we do taxes in Illinois, it's so strange that um, you know you're, you're always a year behind or more. And then uh, page 13. This is more detail on what you've spent on land, furniture, equipment, and actually library books and other materials are capitalized. At the bottom of 13, we have kind of the wording on the, um, the debt, but the, bottom, but the top of 14 is actually more interesting. It has numbers. So top of 14 will show you that um, general obligation bonds series 2010A were paid off this year. So they're 440,000 a year ago. Their 440 was paid off this year. So now you only have the Series B bonds of the 7.8 million. Also, you'll see what we booked for the first time last year: the net pension obligation of 2 million, 15,000 last year. Actually, 500,000 was added to that this year. We'll talk more about that. But the crazy thing about the whole pension obligation thing, I mean, I really agree that it's good that this thing is on the books, and these are more reported on the government-wide statements that are on the earlier pages. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't change anything. IMRF will still tell you what to pay every month or every year, and you'll pay that just like you always have. So they're kind of figuring it out on how to keep track and retire this. But, you know, it now it's more in lights in terms of like, oh, that's a big obligation out there. And then that equipment debt, that 83000 that's that biblioteca down below that, you know, you're capitalizing, you put it on debt, too. And then below is the, you know, how these things are paid off over the next X number of years for the bonds and the equipment. Okay, moving on down to 14. Now, now we start beginning the IMRF or pension note on note 7, which goes page 14, 15, 6, and 16, and part of and 17, all of 17, and half of 18. So that's why it was a big change. Um, I will make a couple comments. Bottom of page 15, that contribution paragraph, and this is actually shown elsewhere, but so, so how much are we paying for IMRF? Well, people are part of IMRF. Of course, they pay their 4.5%, the employees do, but the, the um, dis district is kicking in 13.45% in 2015. So again, that's a number that IMRF comes up with, and you write the check every month for it, or actually electronic transfer. Top of 16 is a little interesting. You're like, well, how do they come up with all this? What are they assuming? Not that you're going to double check their numbers, but it's interesting to know what kind of um, numbers they're using as basis. So the inflation rate at the top, the third one down, says 
on top of page 16, the inflation rate they're assuming to be 2.75 percent. I don't know that inflation is at 2.75 percent for five or ten years. And investment rate of return, you know, some people are going to roll on the floor laughing at 7.44 percent. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember in the news, uh, just maybe a month or so ago, Rauner was talking to like the pension board or something like, please do not lower our rate of return from 7.5% to 7% because that's going to cost us a lot of money. Well, they did increase their cost, you know, their annual payment by, I don't know, half a billion or something. So, I mean, that's what's at risk here is that they have this investment rate of return, which of course, they, they look for the long haul. They're looking 30, 40 years, and they're looking 30, 40 years back, 30, 40 years ahead. You know, I think, you know, so, you know, they're happy with it. They're the actuaries. You know, to some degree, there's a level of trust. On the other hand, it's like, wow, that's a high number. And then you look down below, it's just more or less curiosity. At the bottom of 16, this is actually what your IMRF fund is invested in. And equities and international equities, fixed income, real estate, alternative investments, cash. Um, and then on page 17, it's kind of interesting. Two things I'll point out. So I'd say two thirds down the page. Is, so we're measuring every your year end is June 30th, but IMRF's year end is December 31. So everything's measured here as of December 31, 15. So look at balances December 31, 2015. So your actual pension liability, they're estimating, is 11,857,263. But you have 9,333,535 in assets. So that's why we say your net pension liability is the 2.5 million. Now the other interesting thing below that, is for some people interesting, so we talked about that investment rate of return of 7.44%. And you notice that little table below where it says current 7.44%, 2.5 million is your net pension obligation. Well, let's say we earned a percent less. Well, then that would be 4 million, 71,000. Kind of jumps up a lot. Well, say we earned a percent more. Well, it's kind of cut in half. Now it's 1.2 million. So, what they're trying to show is that we're guessing, and it makes a big difference what we're guessing at. So it's again just probably to let you know the assessment. And actually, we haven't really talked about this number, but it says for the year end of June 30, 2016, the district recognized a pension expense of 522,974. Well, if we keep our uh, finger there, just because we want to make sure we get all the progress. And we go all the way back to page seven. You'll see that, I'm hoping you'll see the same number. Yep, in the middle of the page, on page seven, on the far right hand side, about two thirds down, you'll see maybe about 60% down, 522,974. So, what that was made up of was 341,856 of actual payments and then 181,000 in change in accrual. So that's where that number came from. And uh, page 18, I will. You don't really want to talk about deferred outflows. I mean, the only number to me that's easy to explain is the 164,243 at the top of page 18. It's pension contributions made subsequent to the measurement date. So what's paid? between December 31st and June 30th, hey, you paid down that liability because you made payments, so that's a deferred outflow. Then those other things above it are deferred outflows too. Okay, and then page 19 shows all those adjustments that I was trying to talk about, you know, like bonds and capital assets, the difference between the fund, financial statements, and government-wide. And, uh, Page 20, um, I guess I, um, yeah, so that note 12 talks basically about the 
biblioteca lease that, um, or five years of payments, four more years you have to make. Note 13 is basically a confession that we didn't do everything exactly right last year when we booked pensions for the first time. We didn't book some of those deferred outflows. So this year we had to do another prior period adjustment, booking what we should have last year. It was, we were on the bleeding edge last year. It was implemented as of June 15, 2015. So it was difficult to get information. And then 14 is just your operating transfer, almost done. Page 22, you've really seen all. Yeah, 21 is just compared to your appropriation, your actual compared to appropriation on kind of a high level for your two major funds, general fund building sites. 22, you've actually seen most of that information before, it just says 14, 15. 23, kind of the same thing. 24, you know, if you ever wanted to look, sit down like and, and do a little bit of analysis of this year to last year, like, well, where did we, you know, on a more detailed basis, like why did we spend more money this year than last year? You know, pull out last year's auto reports and compare the information on page 24 with last year's and, and compare it against budget. And, you know, you can see more specifically where your money was spent. Although, again, you get monthly reports if you wanted to make it comparative. Page 25 and 26 are your minor funds or your non major funds. And 26 we can look at for a minute. And again, when you're looking at the fund balances at the end of the year, you can look right up above it and say, well, what were the total expenditures for the year? You know, and where are we on that? You know, so. That would be so. Page 27. Any questions on any of that? Oh, that, that was helpful. I do want to thank Doug and Ryan for their help, always on top of things, always, you know, very cooperative. Do appreciate it. Questions? I know. It's a Just whirlwind, a right? It, is a <laughs> it won't be a quiz. You're not into this kind of stuff. I'm yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. Ryan, do you want to? Yeah. I'll say Chris is great to work with and very thorough, very professional, so thank you for your work on this. And thanks to Doug Widerberg as always. So Doug manages this whole effort with the audit for us, and he's awesome, as you guys know. So thank you, Doug. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for Sorry staying. for detaining you, you. Oh, no problem. I'm going to actually take this water with me and take the, yeah, make not. a copy. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Good night. Good night. I move that we resume the agenda. I'll second. Yeah. Let's see, we have four left. So okay. does anyone want to make a motion on this, please? So he left. Yes. He, I, he said he was going to leave. Oh, okay. yeah. Let we'll that go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Nancy moved that we resume the agenda. Mm -hmm. I seconded. Right, but I mean to approve the, the audit. Oh. But there's a motion on the table to resume the agenda. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You'll re you we voted. To re yeah, on we that, jumped ahead on that. We voted on Yes. To resume it? <coughs> no, we just oh, put what about five we, in. We need to, Nancy, we need to approve the. Yeah. Yes. So we'll have to withdraw. How about if I uh, resumed my motion <coughs> for a moment or three? Totally I will move that we accept the financial statements for fiscal year ended June 20 or June 30, 2016, <coughs> as audited by McClurg and Sarah and Company. <laughs> Chartered. Chartered be accepted <laughs> for filing. Let's rewrite that for next year. I'll second. Discussion. All right, let's have a roll call. Sheldon? Aye. Farcapisi absent. Colwell absent. Nimi? Aye. Cotsinis? Aye. Deal absent. Beckwith? Aye. Aye, have it. Okay. <clears throat> okay.
No, no I move that we resume the agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so now we are new business. at new business, yes. So do I have, it's page 49, just if you ever, anyone wants to look at the, Resolution 4950. I, I will move <coughs> that resolution 2016 2017 dash 2 to determine the estimate of funds needed for fiscal year 2016 2017 be adopted. I'll second that. Okay, Bob is back. Okay, uh, okay, discussion. Bob, we're at new business A. Discussion of this? No? I'll ask, are we confident in the number that we see so listed in this? Uh... Yeah, I mean, obviously, when, when the, uh, the number will be less. Um, bring some numbers. <clears throat> no, I think, you know, best case scenario, and this is kind of a guessing game, maybe we'll see another $60,000 in additional tax revenue if we're lucky. The, the, and the big thing with when you look at the, all the numbers that go into calculating, you know, the, the number that um, we, you know, we can fully capture with the extension, it's the, the, the CPI being at, at you know, what that, that's so low is that what I say 0.07% or what is, what is it? I mean, that just, you know, you're not gonna, other than the new growth in the district, which isn't going to be. Right. Huge. It's yeah. So this will definitely capture any new growth. Um, there's no need for a truth and taxation uh, hearing because the, you know, it's just the environment that we're in. So. Any other comments? All right. Let's have a roll call, please. Farka PC absent. Kotsinis. Aye. Sheldon. Aye. Leo. Aye. Nimi. Aye. Colwell absent. Bequit? Aye. Ice Habit. Okay. You have a new and notable? I do have a new and notable. So, <clears throat> did you know <laughs> that there, so there, is everyone here familiar with the <clears throat> More Than Just Books blog on the website? Show of hands? No. So, if you go, <laughs> it's there, on the website, you can actually click on it. It's, it's morethanjustbooks.wnpl.info. And... It's a blog for readers, listeners, and viewers, and there is a page on there uh, called What Do I Read Next? And one of the great um, features on What Do I Read Next that you'll find is something called Book Connection. At Book Connection, a patron can fill out uh, this paper copy or they can go online and fill out an online form. And basically this is asking readers to give us a profile, a reader profile. And our librarians will take this information, it's confidential, and they'll give our patrons a custom list of things to read. So it's pretty cool. I mean, they, they, we get very detailed, and patrons can share as much or as little as they like. The, the tone of books you like, you know, what, what, what kind of aspects of a book do you like? Do you want it to focus on characters, action, issues, language? What I'm things don't you like? To, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What, I, I apologize. It's okay. I forgot to go in here, and I forgot to pass it up this way. Yeah, um, what things don't you want to read about? Maybe you don't want to read about violence in any of your, any of your books. You will avoid that. Um, uh, you don't want to read about politics. Let's avoid all politics. I'm sick of politics. Um, so it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool um, feature that, that I didn't even know that we featured until recently. Um, and, I, and I love this. Uh, um, so this is something you should know about. So check out the blog. Check out what do I read next. And if you want a... Uh, personalized uh, list of books to read next. Do the uh, book connection. Cool. <clears throat> Questions about that? George, did you say you've done this? I've taken a look at it. I have never seen it. Yeah, I haven't filled it out either. Okay. All right, where are we now? Um, <coughs> Okay, ready for suggestions for next year? You can see the ones, I mean next year. 
<laughs> Next meeting, there, you yeah. can see the <laughs> things that are listed here uh, at the top of page three. Anything else? Or, or anything you want to suggest for Committee of the Whole to go? <clears throat> Nothing? We've already got the policy that we're continuing to review. I think, what was it? 3015? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have the travel policy on sit, both. Sit, sit, we need to take that up again. Yep, I got that for yeah. Committee of the Whole. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Well, if you think of something you want, just uh, email, email Ryan and I, and we'll get that going. Any public forum? I don't see any public forum. Uh, announcements. Next regular meeting is the fifteenth. Committee of the whole is the is it the first? Really? Oh yeah. If it's the fifteenth, it would be the first. National Friends of the Library Week. ILA. Are you presenting tomorrow? I am, yes, with Lauren Chilvers. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, Amy Longwell and Jane Freeze um, talking about um, programs for special needs patrons. That's on Thursday afternoon. Nice. Yeah. Anyone else have announcements they want to? Okay. Anyone want to move to adjourn? I so move. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 8 8. Yes, 8 8. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Thank you. I, I'll email this out, but uh, it slipped me a note.